Hi everyone, I'm Hao Renchu, currently a PhD student at UIUC. I'm glad to present our early work on SLO management with reinforcement learning on multi-tenant serverless platforms. This work is in collaboration with IBM Research. Serverless function as a service or FAST is a relatively new category of cloud computing services that frees customers from managing resources. Instead, the cloud provider has to automatically scale the allocated resources for each function to meet customer service level objectives or SLOs. But at the same time, the provider would prefer higher resource utilization, which means they don't want to over provision. The problem of resource and SLO management to achieve function uh, performance and utilization objectives is at its core an intractable NP hard problem. Additionally, we need to consider heterogeneous function characteristics, which is usually workload dependent, and there might be more frequent function updates. All of these make this a complex task. Traditional heuristics-based approaches have been proved to be inefficient and untenable as they require application or system-specific domain knowledge and repeated parameter tuning is needed to adapt to new changes. Therefore, a number of papers proposed IO-based resource management for applications since 2016, including this I put here. In an IO-based solution, an agent chose one function or application. IO enables an agent to learn the optimal resource management policy directly from interacting with the environment. Since resource management decisions made for each function are highly repetitive, an abundance of data can be easily generated for training such IO algorithms. By continuing to learn, the agent can opt optimize for a specific workload and adapt to varying conditions. Despite their success, these IO-based solutions are single agent and only consider single tenant scenarios, while a serverless fast platform is multi-tenant where uh, heterogeneous functions from all customers compete for shared resources in a cluster. Multi-tenancy makes the environment non-stationary from each agent's own perspective, as it is also affected by the actions of all the other agents. However, environment stationarity should be the standard assumption for each single agent IO algorithm. Since the transitions and rewards depend on the joint actions of all agents, whose decision policies keep changing in the learning process, each agent can enter an endless cycle of adapting to other, other agents. The main problem is that action AT from the agent is based on ST, but when AT is applied to the environment, the state ST has been changed by the other agents who are simultaneously making the decisions. Let's look at a specific example of stationarity violation. At first, there is only one agent in the environment. The current CPU shares for the function that it controls is 256, and the total is 124. Assume that the policy that the agent learns is already optimal, and the action it gives based on the current state is to scale up the CPU shares by 256. And this becomes the next time step. Everything is fine. The agent will continue to make decisions at subsequent time steps. However, let's consider the scenario where there are two agents. Similar to the above case, based on the current state, the action given by the learned policy is to scale up the CPU shares by 256. But at the same time, the action of the agent number two is to scale up by uh, 512. Now, the resulting state for each agent is no longer the preferred state. The optimal solution is to have 0 0.4 for agent one and 0 0.5 for agent two, which we can find in the single tenant cases respectively. Compared to the optimal solution, environment non-stationarity results in up to 3.3 times performance degradation across different serverless platforms. To deal with environment non-stationarity and address the performance degradation of single agent IO in multi-tenant platforms, we target the following challenging objectives. First is performance isolation. It means that during IO training, all agents are able to converge to the collectively optimal policy. And in the execution stage, each agent can achieve comparable performance to single agent IO in single tenant cases. Stability is our second objective. Since in a multi-tenant serverless platform, new functions from different customers can be increasingly registered. And lastly, as functions can be registered, removed, or updated at any time, which changes the joint state space, IO retraining is needed to adapt to such new changes, although we don't have insight on how frequently such operations could happen in production. We envision that 
an approach with a long training time is not going to be tenable. Next, let's first see how our pipeline is plugged into a serverless platform. In our project, we chose an open source serverless platform, OpenWhisk, because all serverless platforms share similar architectures. The controller is responsible for distributing the function requests received from the uh, API gateway across all invoker nodes to serve function requests. It is also the controller which decides whether to create a new function container or not, and where to place the container. Besides, it also decides the container sizes. The invoker then retrieves the function data from the database, executes the function, and writes the results back to the data store. An IO agent gets the state and rewards from the IO uh, proxy module from the infrastructure, which is Docker and C group in our case, translated from the measurements and system telemetry. Based on its policy, it generates the actions to be sent to the horizontal and vertical scaler. Horizontal scaling means to scale in or out the number of function containers, and vertical uh, scaling means to scale down or up the CPU shares and memory limit of function containers. The actions are then passed to the fast controller to be executed. We use a policy gradient method, proximal policy optimization, or PPO, to learn the optimal resource management policy. PPO is the default IR algorithm at OpenAI and performs comparably or better than the state-of-the-art approaches while it's much simpler to tune. We consider the following measurements at the states, including the function SLO performance, resource utilization, request arrival rate, resource utilization, and the horizontal concurrency. As we mentioned in the previous slide, we consider both vertical and horizontal scaling as the actions. The reward function consists of three parts. The first, the subject expression represents the resource utilization goal, the higher, the better. The second part represents the SLO uh, preservation, which is the resource, uh, ratio of SLO latency divided by the actual latency. And the minimum is one. The higher the latency, the lower this ratio is. And if there is no violation, this ratio uh, would be one. The third one is the penalty term. Once there is any illegal or undesired decision, such as frequent dangling decisions or a scaling in up or down when there is no containers, a constant penalty will be given as the reward. We did a sensitivity study on the reward function to help justify the necessity of each part and the coefficient. The first variant is only to keep the SLO performance part in the reward function. The figure on the top shows the total reward per episode evolution as IO routinely proceeds. After the algorithm converges, the agent learns the overprovisioning in resource management policy because as shown in the bottom figure, the utilization in red curve is quite low, although the SLO performance maintained well. The second variant is only keep the resource utilization part in the reward function. After the algorithm converges, the agent learns an underprovisioning strategy. As you can see in the bottom figure, the utilization is quite high while the function suffers from SLO violations. When we consider both utilization and the performance, the agent is able to learn an optimal resource management policy. However, serverless platforms are in essence multi-tenant where different function owners deploy and run heterogeneous functions with various characteristics, SLOs and workload patterns. Each function controlled by an agent competes with other functions on the same platform for limited resources. The transition from single to multi-tenant settings introduces new challenges that require fundamentally different our algorithm design. Let's look at what challenges that multi-tenancy brings. The two figures shows uh, the training convergence comparison of single agent RL in single tenant versus multi-tenant environments. It would be expected for the single agent IO to adapt to the stochasticity introduced by the other agents. However, compared to the learning curve of the single agent IO training isolation, the bottom one has lower reward with higher variance. Most importantly, it doesn't converge in a stable manner. To evaluate the online performance, we compare the single agent IO with the baseline approach in short, which is a heuristic based horizontal and vertical auto scaler. We find that single agent IO in single tenant environment achieved a similar end to end latency compared to N short, while N short over pervasion of containers and resources in some cases. In terms of the performance degradation introduced by multi tenancy, we found that a single agent IO has 
times to 4.6 times degradation in terms of function and to latency. To tackle the non-stationarity issue for single agent IO in multi-tenant cases, we propose a customized multi-agent IO algorithm based on PPO, and we call it Maple. Let's look at Maple's design and some preliminary results. The idea of Maple is to uh, make each agent aware of all the other agents in the shared platform and model them as part of the environment. There are two main changes. First, we change the reward function of each agent to be a team reward, which is the average reward across agents. Second, we extend the state for each agent to be the concatenation of agents' local observation and the global system states, GI. GI includes the aggregated horizontal actions and vertical actions. These represent the collective action of all the other agents in the environment. The other variables are average SLO preservations and average resource utilization across all the other agents. By using aggregated and average values, Maple is agnostic to the agent group size and the agent order so that the incremental training is possible. This is in contrast to the centralized multi-agent IO algorithms, where any change in the agent group will require retraining from scratch. For those algorithms using neural networks, the network needs to be reconstructed as the input and output to the neural networks have been changed. Maple serves as a coordinator for all the IO agents. The states and rewards for each agent will be used to generate the global system states and team reward and used as the extended state and new reward for each agent. Everything else, including the algorithm, is kept the same as PPO. Let's look at the evaluation results for Maple training. During the training, we intentionally add and remove a few agents from the environment at a time to evaluate the incremental training and adaptability of Maple model to agent updates. The figure shows the training curves of Maple in multi-tenant environments. To start with, we created five different functions, and each function is then controlled by an initialized Maple agent. The figure shows the evolution of the average total reward per episode, as each agent has the same reward. The agents were able to reach a stable converge policy after around 500 episodes. Then at the eight, uh, episode 800, we updated the multi-tenant environment by adding five functions, each of which is controlled by a different Maple agent. As shown in the figure, the total reward per episode dropped around 31% and was mainly because the added uh, five new agents were learning the optimal policy, uh, which led to mm, low reward. After around 300 more episodes, the learning curve of the agents were able to uh, convert again. We updated the environment three more times after every 800 episodes by either adding five new functions or removing five existing functions. We observed a similar reward drop and later convergence to about the same level. When we removed five existing functions from the environment, the reward drop was not as much as the previous cases, which is only 11%. We attribute this uh, to the fact that there was no added agent whose reward starts to be randomly lower than a trained agent. The team rewards still dropped due to the fluctuation of the environment as there were uh, five newly added functions. In terms of online performance, we pick the checkpoints of each agent at uh, the uh, 4,000 uh, episodes since we found that performance is similar at other uh, cases. The figure shows the performance comparison between Maple controlled functions and the single IO training multi-tenant environment. As shown in the figure, Maple was able to provide online performance comparable to single agent IO in single tenant cases with a performance degradation ranging from 1.8% for sentiment analysis to 9.9% for mod down to HTML translation in terms of uh, function end to end latency. Compared to single agent IO training multi tenant environments, the Maple uh, achieved uh, 2.5 times to 4.4 times improvement in terms of the function end to end latency. In conclusion, we have presented our early work on providing system support that enables multiple IO-based controllers to coexist with each other. Maple's design is motivated by the fact that single-agent IO suffers online performance degradation and is unable to train to convergence in multi-tenant cases. Maple is scalable and incremental MEIO algorithm. We implemented Maple in a serverless platform, and the results show that it resolves the training convergence problem while providing online performance comparable to single agent IO in single tenant scenarios. Nevertheless, a few challenges and potential improvement are left for future work. 
including fast retraining for newly joined or updated functions with network parameter sharing or transfer learning, and uh, for tolerance to agent dis uh, disconnection or IR transition corruption. Thank you for listening.